What's going on everybody? John here from IncomeMesh.com and my job online is to help you find the perfect tools for your next project. And I'm currently in the middle of a big dogfight between Breezy, Thrive Architect, Gutenberg, Divi, and whatever else I can get my hands on to see which is the best page builder for 2019 and beyond. And in today's video, we're gonna do a deep dive on Breezy, which is really making a splash in the WordPress community as an awesome, intuitive, and up and coming page builder. And we are going to do in this video is compare it against these other big hitters in the industry by kind of putting it in a head-to-head -head competition to rebuild a homepage that I currently have on IncomeMesh.com. By the time you're seeing this video, it might have changed, but this is what I have currently. So if you want to see the other page builders, go ahead and check out the description of this video. You'll be able to see all the other links to the other individual um, example builds but in today's video we're going to waste no time and dive right in where we're going to start with a brand new fresh installation of wordpress we're going to install the astra free theme we're going to install brizzy and breezy pro to be able to do what we need to do and we'll waste no time and dive in so let me get myself out of the way here let's go over to this brand new uh installation i've created conversion i've created my breezy sandbox here i just deleted all plugins that were on this site so you can see we have nothing here let's go ahead and get started by installing our theme Go to themes and add new and we will search for astra which is my theme of choice for testing because i want to make sure that i have a lightweight theme that's not going to hold me back let's check to see here astra activate activate <laughs> and then we'll go into plugins now breezy is split into two parts there is the free version here which is the the free page builder but i am a I don't know why it's saying this update failed button. It's a little, a little creepy. All right, there we go. Successfully installed. This is a brand new WordPress, so we should be up to date with everything. Uh, so we have Breezy, which is the free version, but I think that as a part of this build, we're going to require components that are part of the paid version. And because I just can't control myself, I tend to buy new tools when they come out. So I have the pro version installed, 0.15. So we're good to go. We have our two page builders. Let's just go to our dashboard and check out the updates tab here to see if there's any updates required. Nope, we're, everything is up to date. Let's look at our website first. All right, so we have the very clean vanilla uh, Astra look. Let's go ahead and create a new page and we'll build our first page with Breezy. Alrighty, so before we go in and dive in, we're gonna take a look at our model here. What we're gonna do, we have kind of a call to action section with a hero image on the right. We've got some, uh, feature sections, a little image and three column layout, a blog roll, and some questions and answers, and finally a footer. So not too bad, but it's got several elements there. So let's go to our customizer here on Breezy, say no sidebar, and let's do a full width. Let's try full width contained because that's generally what I use for these, but that might not be correct. And we'll take a look as we dive into it. So we will edit with Breezy here, Breezy test. Let's just go ahead and publish this page. And let's edit with Breezy. Okay, so now we have our blank canvas page, but I wanna have my header and all that good stuff here. So let's go first and change from the Breezy template to my default template. And let's see if I did that correctly. All right, cool. So we've got the, the full width, we've got the header, we've got the footer, but we also have our Breezy area in the middle. What I failed to do was remove the title, but we'll ignore that for now and we'll just remove the title later on. This is one of the challenges of using an actual page builder like this is that if you made, if you wanted to tweak something in the back end of your WordPress dashboard, it's several more clicks. You have to get out of the page builder, go and make the adjustment and then come back. So I'm gonna skip that for now. The other rule I'll make for myself here is I'm gonna use uh, all blank templates to show you the actual building experience with Breezy instead of kind of using these pre-built blocks, which is a huge, huge uh, benefit of the Breezy Builder. So we'll start with a blank block and let's kind of get an idea of what we're going to do here. First, let's get that background image going. So we will select the settings of our background. We'll go to our background image here and let's grab in. I've pre- organized all the images I'll need for this build. So I'll pull in the background here and select it. All right, what's cool about Breezy is you can select what part you wanna focus in on. So if you always want the, the map to show, you can put your focus point right there. 
but I'm okay to be in the middle because there's kind of some interesting elements on each side. And luckily this is already set up as a two column layout. So let's add in the text here by doing some text. And we're gonna make this a header one, the perfect tools for your next project. And let's make a, another line here, copy this text. And let's see if on Breezy, if it's able to take a, a small section of this. And let's make this uh, heading six. Maybe a little bigger, heading five, there we go. Hi, I'm John. One thing I noticed with uh, Breezy is that it doesn't really do spacing nicely between lines of text. You normally will have a bit more of a line height between when you, as you hit enter. I don't see that so much with Breezy, which is just kind of an interesting uh, style of it. Now let me go through and adjust the coloring of here because first of all, I do have a color overlay here. Let me grab the hex color real quick. And let me grab, I think it's this color. Let me just make one huge efficiency gain with Breezy is you can put the color in once and then you can just simply adjust it as you go. Now we don't want full trans, there. Interesting. So one difference already. Okay, so interesting. So I wanna make sure I, I touch on this. If I look at Breezy, or um, this is Divi right now, the way this works is this image has a bunch of transparency and then a few kind of highlight features like the you know, little graph over here and the little map. And on Breezy, when I pull that image in, the image shows up correctly. However, what I would have expected to see is instead of only offering an overlay option, I would have expected a fill option where it would be able to fill in any of the transparency of the image. Here, it doesn't seem to offer that, uh, which is honestly not very good. So I could either do an overlay where it's a flat color, which would totally override it. And I don't think there is a way to do a fill for the transparent sections. And it's one of those things where you might just never have thought to even try that, but that is something to keep in mind. So we can't do that exactly the same way. So I guess what we'll have to do is, huh, I guess I'll just leave it transparent and it's gonna look a little bit ugly, but that's okay. And then here, let's change the color from that text to a darker text. Gosh, it really does mess up your plans, doesn't it? So let's do white, and we'll have to change the background to being more of a, let's, let's just do that orange color, but add the opacity. So we have to give up kind of our background image there, which is just something we have to do in this instance. Now we'll take our image here, and add, let's see if I can drag it directly on here. Nope, you can't. All right, so our image we'll select here and I think I should be able to add, no, okay, this is a little frustrating. When you see the little cloud with the up arrow, you expect to be able to drag and drop onto it. That's just kind of what we've been conditioned to expect. But in Breezy right now, you actually do need to go in and then up drag it into your actual media library. So here I wanna add my focus onto the face and we've got that. We also wanna make some adjustments here. There is a height for 100%. That will give me the full height of, of the, the person we fit in automatically. So that's looking good so far. Let's make sure we get rid of some of the padding that would be intrusive right now. Now here's one of the challenges you have to kind of find where the padding is because padding can be hidden in a couple of different locations. All right, so margin and padding. So here we want no padding on the top side. That's correct. We also want to find, I think what's going on here is we have this aligned in the center. So we can go to this column, adjust my settings and bottom align the setting. Oh, which isn't exactly helping us here. Let's, let's find this guy out. Okay. Here we've got some Margin, no, that's not what we're looking for. Let's see what this looks like. Getting a little bit frustrated trying to get it just how I want it. So you see, you've got this padding here. We gotta figure out where that padding's coming from. So it looks like there might be some, there's probably some margin on the image itself. So here we can see 10 units of margin here. Let's remove that, that will help. And then there's gotta be, here we go. So, I love that Breezy is so, 
like minimalist in this design, but it can also make you forget that, oh yeah, I've got this one column and we adjusted the, the settings on this one column to remove that padding. Let's make sure actually we get rid of that padding there. But we also need to remember that this entire set of columns here in this row, this may have its own set of padding rules, which is 10 pixels there. Remove that. And now I just have this one last guy where I'm set to 15. So now I need to go whew, to the entire section and go to more settings here. You have to dig into several, several options. So for example, this was set to 15 and I could drag it to more, but I can't drag it to less. You actually have to go digging into the settings here, get into your advanced settings, then find your padding and then move that down to zero. And finally, at long last, we have aligned my mid section to the bottom of the, that section there. Whew, okay, off to a rocky start here with Breezy. And then let's add a button here with that hover animation. Should be able to go to button, drag it right here. Very good. And let's go ahead and see what our options are. The icon, we have that right icon, that looks good. What I wonder is, you have the options here for um, normal and hovered. So you got the background color. Let's see what colors we wanna use here. Let's just use a white. So let's do the background color here. Is that nice gray color? The text color, what I love, Breezy has done a great job of making this intuitive uh, in how you're actually working with the builder here. And these are where you'd want to see the settings all together. Don't worry about the border. And then on the hover section, if we don't want it to hover to that blue, maybe we'll hover to, there you go, that works. A little bit of a more translucent white. And then the text, we wanna to keep to that black color. Okay, we have a very subtle hover effect here. Let's right align this button. And we've done the best we can to build out this section here. Again, I'm not gonna worry about the type font itself. Obviously, all that can be um, changed around and, and adjusted, but let's just see how it's looking so far. So as we load this page up, we can see it's looking good, but there's one obvious issue going on here is the it, while it's full width, because we have it set to be a contained area, it's actually not going to extend the color of the background sections unless we make it a full stretched layout. So uh, let's make that adjustment in the back end here. So what we'll do is go back to our editor, back to WordPress. Everything should be saving automatically, which is very nice. And let's head down to the content layout. We want full width and stretched now, which is unintuitive because I want the content to be contained to a certain pixel, uh, pixel container but I want the background to be able to stretch to the edge of the, edges of the screen. So uh, that's one where it kind of makes you nervous because if there's other things, I'm thinking like Learn Dash and other tools, they pull in their own elements as you're editing them. And if you have it stretched, that content may automatically go all the way edge to edge on the screen, which is not what you want. But we're going for, you know, let's see how this goes. And let's see, once we've made this update, we'll view the page. And now we can see it's looking as expected. Very good. So let's move back into our editor. Go back to continue to edit with Breezy. And let's take a look at our next section we're gonna build together. So now we have the three columns, two rows with icons and uh, some text blurbs here. All right, so let's add another, like I said, I'm, gonna get it, I'm going to go blank. And let's add another column. So now we have three columns here. That's super easy to do. I could drag and drop, but I do not want to do that. Let's try to put these back at 33. There you go. Control Z is a magical button. And let's, so these could be icons. And let me show you one thing I love about Breezy is their icons are like abounding. You can see so many icons. Uh, you can categorize them. You've got all these icons. It's really, really great. But I have pre-selected some images, so let's keep true to the story, and let's do an image. And the first one we want is that pie chart. So let me add the pie chart in. Ah, I'm still getting used to Every builder has its own workflow, so we're kind of working through that right now. So we have our pie chart. Let's move this over to the correct column. I'll adjust that sizing in a second, but let's just go ahead and put the rest of the elements on here. So now we have some text, dark text, and let's make it, uh, let's say an H4, feels about right. All right, so let's say conversion, 
optimization. Let's center this. Now let's take a look at how we make this not so fuzzy. So size is said to be 100%, but I want it to be 100% of the image itself, not forcing it into the container it's in. This is not the most intuitive. All right, that's the height of the image. The size, though, you can see it's not meant to be that full that full size. So I guess we'll just go with a... Can I select pixels? No, you can't select that. Let's check more settings one last time. We have padding, margin, shadow. Okay, so we'll go with that. Uh, that's not how I would like it to work. I would like to be able to um, have it not pixelate, because here you can see it's not... You know, this was Divi, and, and Gutenberg was a similar experience. You drag it in, it's going to go no larger than the size it was intended to go. But it looks like Breezy tries to fill the container that is in, which uh, is an interesting design decision. So let's take this text, and let's add a new row, paste it in, and again, let me adjust this text here to be, let's just do paragraph, it's smaller. Looks good, and we might want to add another line here or so, line height. And then we also want to include a read more button. So let's do that. Take this button here, bring it down. Now let's see if we can get it to where it looks like this, even though it's actually a button. So what we're gonna wanna do is take the color and the background color, we're gonna wanna make that white, <clears throat> or you can make it uh, transparent, I suppose, as well. Take the text color and make it orange, this is looking right, and then on the hover color, let's make it orange, but a little bit darker. So you can see, as I dragged it off of the global, it lost that global, oh, sorry, I adjusted the background, didn't I? But what I was saying was, I can start with a global color, and then I can drag it off, and it won't adjust the global color everywhere, it's just going to make this a unique color option there, hope that makes sense. So for the Hover background, we actually want this to remain uh, transparent. And the text will be that orange color, but we'll make it a little bit darker, give it some slight hover effect, and good to go. Now, I don't think we can make it to where the icon only appears on hover. Let's see if we can do that. It doesn't look that way. We can change where it's placed and the changing the spacing between it, but the button is gonna be just like that. Okay, does that look about right? Looks about right. So now what we're going to want to do is take this and duplicate this row. And what we can actually do is remove this. This is an even better workflow. You can build it once and then continue to duplicate from there. So that looks good. Now let's adjust this image here to be the landing page example. Select that. Now we have landing pages. And let's say... Great landing pages. Great landing pages, and take this text here. Learn how to use beautiful, beautiful landing pages. Boom. And we're not going to adjust the actual link to where all these buttons go, but you can make it do a pop-up, an anchor link, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So pretty easy there. Okay, conversion optimization. Uh, let's see what this section is supposed to be. Email marketing. We got the email there. So let's take our text. Come over here, adjust this image again. Let's find that email image, which I can drag right in from the folder I've kind of organized for this. Call this email marketing and adjust this text to be what I grabbed from the other version. Oof, so again, take a look at this. Interesting, I'm not very excited to see this. Uh, it's cropped off a section of my icon, which it apparently thought I wanted it to do. I don't know why it would have thought I wanted only 60% of the height. And maybe if, if I were to go and review the tapes, maybe I'd see that I told it to be that way. But I did. I didn't, didn't want to. It's also interesting that I guess height can be 200%, which that doesn't look... Just kind of interesting. I, I'm not a big fan of the way that it lets you customize the image sizing and placement. So I want the height to be the full height of the image. But I want the size, ah, I don't know, that's interesting. That's, um, I guess it's neither right nor wrong. I'm just not very, not feeling it. 
So then we can take that row and duplicate the row, which makes it very easy. And let's continue on with the super simple courses. And let's go here, remove that, add in my instructor cap. Bada bing, bada boom. Now let's check. All right, so it's retaining the 50% size and 100% height. So that's good. It's just weird that you have to set that up in the first place. Now let's go ahead and take that text. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's adjust this one here to be the done for you blueprint. So we'll go here, select the new item, get find our blueprint icon, drag it in, say select, and then done for you or something of that nature. I'm not too worried about the text being exactly right. Okay. So now we're cooking with gas, as my uncle would say. Now let's find the last item here, which is a checklist. Pull the checklist in and select it. Very good. And then we have use this, not that. You get the idea. So we have our, our next section here. We'll go ahead and hit say update. And let's see how this looks in its own window. Perfect tools for your next project. Looking good so far. You can see our we have the entire window stretched, which is correct. We have our different icons here. Kind of do a side by side. Looking good. The button is nice and subtle. You can't really tell it's a button. Okay, looks good. Let's move on to the next section, which is this here where we have a headline, and then we have a three column with some padding action going on there. So let's build that out together. Let's give ourselves a new block, and let's kill this one block so we have just the one for the headline. We'll add our text in here, and let's just take this verbatim from the example site. I test and break online tools all day long, so you don't have to. I'm such a nice guy. And let's make this an H2, and let's center line this. And I wonder um, if I can manually adjust how, how much of the container I take. Add an animation in here. Let's, let's do a bounce. Oof, no, I don't, don't like animations. <coughs> So I'm looking here on some of the settings. I want to be able to, there we go, instead of being 100% width, maybe say I only want 78% of the width here. That way it's a little bit tighter than the rest of the container. And now let's add another section, which this will now be uh, this guy right here. So let's build this out by first taking a text. We'll take that text, we'll head here, add another text module. And I'll be honest with you, I'm really regretting uh, adjusting this color palette to orange because this is the one I really needed for all my text items. But uh, let's go ahead and adjust this down to that dark color. And let's see how that looks. Let me get this text. Paste this. Okay, so we have this guy here. And let's go ahead and add our image in, which is going to be an image item here. And let's add in this circle graph. Goodness gracious. Okay, got a circle graph and select. <sighs> okay, come on, Breezy. Why? Why? Why would you think this is what I wanted to fill? <laughs> oh, that's, that's interesting. All right, so height is 74% for some reason. So if we make that 100%, it does what you'd expect. It fills up the area. I don't know why. Oh, that's kind of weird. Let's add one more column here. And let's add text in one, one more time. And let's go through and take this text here and paste it in there again poor selection of color palette on my part, but that's okay. And then what, I can, what we can do here to simulate this padding is simply go to the plus, find our spacer, and drag the spacer over and bring it down to about yay. Yay high. What was I thinking with these colors? Okay, so we should have another section complete, looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and preview this on the real side. All right, the perfect tools for your next project. Oh, I, I forgot my little header here, didn't I? What I love, let's add a quick header in um, before we move on, but let's review this. So it's looking good, looks very professional. All right, let's go back in, add a quick little section right here. So let's, uh, what is the best way to add a section? Here we go, plus. We'll add this section here. We'll just delete this guy here. We don't need this. And we'll call this 
a text, pull them in, I love, and let's make this dark, and let's make it an H2 as well, so it's a main, a main section here, and center line it, boom. I can reduce some padding here, maybe increase some padding there, looking good so far. Let's go into our next section, which is going to be a simple blog roll. So we'll do a latest post and then add a blog roll. So first of all, we're going to want to add, let's just do one column and we'll have latest posts. And again, let's make this an H2 as it's a main section. Let's center line it. And so sorry about that color palette. That looks good. And now it should be as easy as going through here. And because I have the pro activated, I should also have a posts section here, which I can pull right through. And here again, no fault of Breezy's, but I don't have any posts. This is a brand new WordPress site. So that's how it's going to look, which I'll still pass. We can always style this uh, once we have some posts to play with. Let's just add a little bit of space in between that, which is so easy to do with that spacer item. And we're looking good. So let's move on to the next section which is gonna be uh, slightly more advanced because we've got single column, double column, some different types of text, and then a button down here. So let's build that real quick. Another blank block. Let's go ahead and do our colored background, which will be here. And let's get rid of this one column for now and add in the text. So this text is gonna be <laughs> impossible to see because of that. So now we're going to say, um, what, do I, what do I call this section? Answers to your questions. And let's make this once again H2. Center it. Looking good. And then we can add additional rows, which is pretty easy to do by simply dragging in the, where is it? There it is, the row and column. So we'll add a row down here. And that by default adds in two columns, which is convenient. And we can add some text here as well, make it white. And let's just copy and paste some of this text here. So who am I? Who are you really? And let's make this that, well, maybe an H3 for this one. And then let's paste the answer. Make this answer and make it, let's start with paragraph. Paragraph might be a little small, but that's because of how the, the, the theme is set up. Okay, looks pretty good. And what we can do, you have the choice of duplicating this text module. Yeah, let's duplicate it because I think we're going to have some nice padding here, which will really help. And let's, for, you know, for the sake of speed, uh, you guys get the idea. I, we don't need to particularly um, copy and paste every single one individually. But let me just move this module. Now, this is pretty cool. So I can very easily just take this entire block and move this entire block over here and it does all the work for me. So we've got four questions here, which you can imagine we're going to be able to do this pretty easily. Where we're going, going to fail here is in the same way as on the first section, I can't also include an image, which was news to me because I wanted to be able to add this image in that shows a little icon in the top right. If I do that, because I have that overlay, it simply becomes extremely washed out. And maybe that's an effect you would like. Uh, it's not what I was going for, but we'll, we'll leave it for now since it's a bit more true to the original intent of the page. But that is one thing that Breezy currently doesn't seem to support. <clears throat> let's go ahead and update the page, and let's check it out before we go on to the last section of the page. All right, looking good, looking good. Here's our post here. It's kind of a sad blog roll, but... That's okay, it's no fault of Breezy's. And then here's a recent section. And you know, as we're looking at it, maybe that does look kind of cool. Maybe you're happy with that, uh, but just to be aware of. Okay, let's move on to the final section, which as we look at our model here is a three column layout. We've got a, a, some social icons, a, um, a little freebie, and an opt-in form. So let's go here, add a blank block. Let's go and add that third column just so I can kind of have my bearings about me. So here we're going to have a follow icon. So we'll say, make it dark. Let's do maybe an H4. That looks about right. And because there's no, I don't think there's any social icons specifically, 
you're actually going to need to custom build these. You can build them through buttons or you can build them through uh, clickable icons. I'm just thinking through how I want to do this. Let's let's first try making them icons and seeing if we can put icons side by side. If I were to take another one. No, I don't think that works that way. You can't put them side by side, which is what I want. So we're going to go buttons because... Breezy has a pretty unique way of dealing with buttons. You can take one button and then duplicate. I thought you could do that. Is it because the width is... Let me get rid of this guy. Ooh. There is a way. I guarantee you there is a way to have these buttons side by side. There you are. Hmm. A little bit interesting how this is working, but we're going to roll with it. So if I make this any smaller, okay. So it's doing what it should do. We have our two, our two buttons side by side. Let's put our third. Oof. Having some styling issues here. Let's maybe remove the text <clears throat> and see if when we remove the text and just have the Facebook icon, here we are, the Facebook icon. Oof, not a big fan of how this is shaping up. And we don't want any icon spacing. Zero spacing. What is border? Zero border. Yeah, this is a little tricky to make a social icon. <clears throat> Looking through the best way to do this. Let's just review what tools we have at our disposal here. We have text, button, icon, image. I guess you can make images that are clickable, but that looks kind of old school. Icon box, that's not really what you're wanting. So as you look at what they've done for their own, if you look for like social, you'll see what they do is something like this. Okay, so what are these? What's going on here? These are icons. Oh, look at that. Okay, so they're individual icons, and if you duplicate the icon... Oh, okay, all right, now we're rocking and rolling. See, we're learning together. So I was right originally that buttons and icons can be side by side. I was just doing it wrong. So follow income mesh. Let's go back to our icon now. <clears throat> now we're cooking with gas. And let's go here, let's add our Facebook icon, and let's just color it, uh, kind of color it all together. Boom. And, of course, we have a color hover color I'm not a big fan of and here let's just basically not have a hover effect looks good let's duplicate it and now perfect we can make this a YouTube icon and because I duplicated it after styling the styling should be good together let's center this that looks good okay what's in the middle column just a simple image so we'll come here go to image adjust the image here and pull in my little opt-in freebie Alrighty, we got the book here. We'll select it, and that shows up. And now here on form, this is a current uh, in development for uh, for Breezy. You can add a form, but it's more like a contact form. You can't have it link up to your uh, autoresponder. So we'll kind of have to use our imagination a little bit here, where we're putting in you know, email address and imagine that eventually they can integrate. You would instead have to currently uh, go directly from your autoresponder like ConvertKit or MailerLite and add that form in there. Uh, but we'll kind of give it a pass for now because I know it's under, under development. And now let's update the page and let's preview this guy. Okay, so here's our updated page. We struggled with the padding there for a little bit, but we eventually got it working out. And as we look down, we can see icons are looking good. This section here has the padding as expected. Let's just play with responsiveness. So it looks like it's holding on as long as it can, and eventually it will stack. All right, now this is left aligned, center aligned. So it looks like I didn't do any centering of this. But that's okay. We have our blog reel, answers to our questions with that overlay effect, and this uh, little footer here. So I honestly expected Breezy to be a little bit 
easier and breezier than it was, but also I'm not as familiar with it as I am with some of the other page builders. <clears throat> but I honestly found Gutenberg to be a little bit easier than this one was, which was a surprise to me. So what I wanna do now is head back into the WordPress dashboard, make sure this page is updated and live, and we're gonna view this live page and run it through a series of speed tests to see how it performs just using Breezy. So I'm gonna take this URL, I'll head over to GT Metrics, and let's head back to the homepage and put in this guy here. You can use Pingdom, you can use GT Metrics, but at, so long as it's the same as you're testing it through, just if you're wanting to compare them side by side. And here we're looking at uh, our different parameters for this test, but right now I really wanna get that speed test because I'm curious how optimized Breezy is. Okay, so, ooh, interesting result. It was 2.7 seconds, really good scores, but not the best page speed you know, load time. So let's go ahead and log our data. So this is breezy, 2.7 seconds. Let's retest that. There may be some things that are trying to load into uh, cache. So after a few tests, we'll probably have a good idea how the overall performance is. Okay, much better, 1.3 seconds. Retest again. All right, consistent 1.3 seconds on test number three. Let's go for test number four. And getting better, 1.1 seconds on test number four. And let's do finally test number five. And taking a step back there to 1.7 seconds on step number or test number five. Okay, so the jury is in where you're six tenths of a second faster using Gutenberg than you are on Breezy, and we'll find out more as we use each of the other builders. So let me give you my overall impressions on the build speed. Breezy is a very flexible builder. Uh, with that, it doesn't give you the most number of modules or things to use. Like, for, for example, when I was building in uh, Gutenberg, I could drag in one item and it would be my info box, which would have an icon, a prefix, a header, a separator, and text all there in one drag and drop implementation. There's pros and cons of that, where it, it's fast if that's what you want. But Breezy is good because it allows you to kind of pull in just the, the raw, I mean, a button, a spacer, some text, but then all the styling is done individually on those elements. Uh, so that's kind of, it's, if you're not super finicky and super particular on how you want your styling to be, then I think the Gutenberg methodology of having all these blocks uh, that are made up of a bunch of different components, that works really well. If you wanna have every pixel perfect detail, then Breezy is gonna be good for you. But in general, I had a bit rougher of a time navigating the Breezy experience than I did on Gutenberg. That might just be me because I know a lot of people are saying that Breezy is very easy to use. I just found that you know they hide so many menus and you'll have to like find the little carrot to you know even open up the menu section. And then oftentimes you're going one or two or three levels deep just to find the padding between rows and things of that nature. So I didn't, I actually thought it'd be faster to build with. So I'm gonna give this a five out of 10. Again, this is the most scientific, it's a, you know, uh, these are how I feel about it right now after going through it. Build ease is a mixed bag. Uh, you know, little things like adding in images and icons and adjusting the color schemes, those are really, really nice. Like I'm, I'm thinking through the, the experience and I enjoyed that. Whereas with uh, with Gutenberg, he has to change the color every single time. And that's not ideal, especially if you can't customize that color palette. So I, I'm gonna have to give an eight out of 10 on the build ease with um, with Breezy because while some things were not as easy as I would expect, uh, others are just super nice ideas and, and super nice to build with. So that was a good one. Ending result page speed. I'm not very happy with uh, 1.6 seconds for you know, this is why I'm doing this test the way I am. You know, check out the other videos of the other uh, of the other builders because I'm using the same images, the same blurbs, the same everything. The only difference here is the theme potentially and the page builder we're using. So I'm gonna kind of have to say six out of ten for page speed. I mean, it's not two seconds, which is I certainly hope it wouldn't be two seconds, but I would expect better for uh, a brand new website. And so for the overall rating, if we do just do a straight average, six point three. Honestly, Gutenberg got the win on this one. Another couple of things that would make me concerned about Breezy, at least today, is the fact that I had to create the page in that stretched 
layout instead of being able to say, I want to use the full width of my container, but I want to contain all the text inside of that. When I selected that setting, it forced all the background, all that to be contained in that one little area. And oftentimes for those background sections, you're going to want your uh, background image, your colors, all those things to spread the entire screen. You know, websites don't just go straight down the page anymore, you know, in that one little container. They have some things that go full screen. They have some things that are contained. And the fact that I had to go into that stretched format is, I would say, kind of like not very standard because you want to force all the content to be in that container. You just want to have the ability of the CSS to spread the um, all that good stuff to the corner. So maybe that's just a big gripe on my part, but I, I do know that if you try to mix and match content, um, where it's stretched and contained, you might get some weird results. The other thing is Breezy is being made by some awesome developers, but it's a small team working in a kind of a closed garden fashion. And there's pros of that, kind of like the Apple, uh, you know, what Apple is designed to do with their Macs and their iPhones, they do it well. But if you want to add customization, sometimes it's not that easy to do because it needs to be approved by them. Gutenberg, on the other hand, is the total opposite. It's kind of the windows of the world where you can customize it to your heart's content. Um, there are going to be extensions already. You saw I, I, in the video for Gutenberg, there were several plugins that I brought in even on the first month of Gutenberg in development to add additional functionality that can bring your site down and crash it if there's a plugin that's poorly written. But you know, that's probably not going to happen with Gutenberg. Uh, but you have more options and more flexibility with that there. So that is the current state of Breezy versus Gutenberg versus the other page builders, which are uh, soon to come. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm John from IncomeMesh.com. My goal online is to help you find the perfect tools for your next project. If you enjoyed this tutorial, this walkthrough, and this comparison that I'm conducting here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, the like button, the share button, hit all the buttons you want to hit, and leave a comment. And if you want me to add something else to the list, right now you know, I'm planning on using Divi, Thrive Architect, Breezy, and Gutenberg on this side by side because selfishly, I've been curious which one of these is best and which one I want to really build out with the income mesh. And uh, right now, you know, from the score, I'm leaning towards Gutenberg. So guys, let me know if, if you want me to see Elementor or Beaver Builder, any of those side by side, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to include it. Until next time, guys, take care.